I mark pictures. Way to wear it. Tea drinking, caffeine intolerant, beard trimming, carp freak. I've been an angler for over 30 years and caught carp from waters far and wide, big and small. For me, it doesn't matter where, as long as the challenge is exciting and inspiring. But in this series, the target is out of my control. Three challenges will be put forward on Fox's Facebook page. Then it's up to you to have the final say on what mission I take on. I've faced some incredibly tough challenges so far. Have you been drinking de icer again? Some of which I've smashed out the park. This one for the win. Others have dealt me a devastating blow. I literally have no words. But I'm still here and ready to pick up any gauntlet that is thrown down. This carp freak is not giving up without a fight. Yes! This is the challenge. One new message. Hi Mark, it's that time of year again when I set you your challenge special task. Now, this one I think you will like. You have four nights to pass five challenges which you have previously failed. Now those challenges are going to be the bait bucket roulette, play your carp right, abracadaccurate, the tea strain challenge, and the cack handed challenge. You've got one week to prepare, good luck, and I'll see you soon. So Harry set me the challenge and immediately I'm thinking, no chance. I mean, I've, I've failed these challenges before under 24 hour, 48 hour uh, sessions. So what chance did I have of passing five in four nights? I didn't think that it was gonna be easy for him, but it was a very good opportunity to, for him to exercise some demons. I think he does get people saying, oh, why didn't you do this? Or why didn't you do that? And I think he does, he does take it personally sometimes when he doesn't quite, quite do them. So yeah, this was a chance for him to exercise some demons and, and, and get those monkeys off his back. Okay, so the tea strain challenge. Um, this was a great session actually it started off quite slow but after that I caught fish regularly through the session I caught the weight needed to pass the challenge I caught a mirror I caught a common but I failed by not catching a ghosty and on all the sessions I've had on East Elf Lakes uh, prior to the challenge and after then if I've caught anywhere near that amount of fish I've always had one or more ghosties so i do feel as though lady luck just wasn't on my side on this occasion abracadaccurate well i think that looks freaking amazing <laughs> you just ruined my bibby this one went right down to the wire losing that fish on a zig is off had that fish had gone in the net, then it would have been a pass. <laughs> I don't want me to say. I, just... I needed to catch two 25 pluses. I'd, I'd already caught one, and this fish, um, I mean, I saw it clear as day. It was, it was just a few feet in front of me in, in, in the boat, and it was nearer 30 than it was 25. And it was quite frankly sickening to come that close and to fail. Oh. I'm just, I'm absolutely gutted. The cack handed challenge. This was without a doubt the most frustrating challenge I have done to date. Oh no, no. It was just a, a cast. Oh, just, just no. It was every bit as bad as I knew it was going to be. Um, completely arsed it up and made myself look a bit of a tit. Couldn't feel a drop, never mind. It's either in weed or it's not. 
the Bait Bucket Roulette Challenge. And this one was going back to the, the early days when the challenge first began back in 2014. And I was making my first visit to the Stanick Lakes Complex. We were over on Mallard Lake and I needed to catch two 20 pounders. Back then, there weren't that many 20s in Mallard Lake. I think I remember someone saying around one in, one in 10 fish back then was a, was a 20 pounder. I mean, now it's, it's full of them. And I failed to catch a single 20, but I caught a lot of fish. I think I caught eight or nine carp, uh, including more than one upper double. And, and I look back now and I see photos of, of them upper doubles I caught and those fish are, are now 20 pounders. So in some ways I've passed the challenge, but um, I don't think it would really wash with Harry, no. <laughs> so play your cart right. Oh. This is the one where Harry shafted me for an ounce. You've got... You've got... You've got... <laughs> You've got to be kidding. <laughs> Failed by an ounce. Um, but to be honest, I hold myself totally responsible for failing that challenge. I stalked that fish from the margins. I saw it take the hook bait. When I, when I saw it, I, I put that fish as being a 16 pounder and I'm I'm pretty accurate at judging fish in the water. And if I hadn't have been in so much of a rush and just said 16 pound, I should have played it better. I should have, I should have said 16 and a half or you know, something like that, just to, to, to play it a bit safe. Um, so as much as Harry did screw me over, I've got to hold my hands up there and, and say that, yeah, that, that fail was down to myself really. So feeling pretty disappointed with myself I was looking forward to writing some wrongs second time round. What's up carp freaks and Merry Christmas. Can you believe this weather we're having right now in December? Oh, Scotch yo. So for this festive challenge, I have been set the task of passing five challenges that I have previously failed. The challenge failed. It's a fail. It's a fail on paper. Challenge failed. It's, it's challenge failed. Now, I don't know exactly what the rules are, and to be honest, it doesn't really matter because Harry's just gonna make it up as he goes along, I'm sure. But to kick things off, I have come to Nuddock Wood near Scunthorpe. Now, this is a private syndicate that I've been very kindly given permission to fish. It's got a great stock of fish, including fish to over 40 pounds. So I think it's a great place to start. And you know what? I can't wait to get cracking.
a lot of people said you were wearing your hat backwards as a midlife crisis. Well, you told me to wear it back for, backwards because you said it was casting a shadow on my face. You're wearing yours backwards. You're not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm not familiar with the rules. You haven't told me the stipulations okay, yet. So, so all, basically all the challenges can merge into one big mama challenge, can't they really? Yeah, yeah, everything counts not, for everything. Yeah, it's not like you've got to pass one and then on to the next one yeah, and then on to the next that'd one. be ridiculous. So this is the swim that I've chosen and you might be able to see over my shoulder here there is quite a few fish cruising around just sort of 15 to 40 yard out. Um, also down to my left here we've got this really overgrown margin uh, with some nice shallow water beneath all the, the, the tree canopy and I think as that sun climbs higher and it gets hotter I think the fish are going to seek out seek out the shade and get right underneath those trees have already seen quite a lot of fish down this margin as well including a few a few big fish so that's looking that's looking great but right now there are quite a lot of fish just round the corner um, basking in the sun just sheltered from that wind uh, and they look prime for a bit of a bit of stalking well this wasn't quite the area I had in mind but as I've come around here there is a few fish just on the edge of this bush here They didn't seem impressed by that one bit. He seemed very chasey, I think. Don't start spawning at Christmas time. That would be ridiculous. I think there's more down in that corner. I think I got too distracted by these sort of six or seven fish. And I know there's a lot more down, farther down the bank. So I'm gonna head off down there. Well, I just saw a group of about four or five fish just on the edge of this, this tree here. And I just flicked out a, a piece of bread flake, slow sinking bread flake. And one came out from underneath the branches and grabbed it straight away. It's not a big fish. It's not a big fish by any means compared to compared to some of the other fish that are in here. But right now I'll be very happy to see this go in the net. Here he comes. Here he comes. Yay! <laughs> and we are up and running. That took a lot longer than I was expecting, actually. I'd been flicking in slow sinking maggots in the, in the path of fish, and it was just absolutely perfect level, perfect height, and they were just completely ignoring it. Changed over to a little piece of slow sinking bread flake, and one just shot out from underneath, underneath this bush here, grabbed it straight away. And that's it, it's in the net. Let's have a look at him. Well, this wasn't quite what I had in mind when I uh, came to, to Nudduk Woods. It's probably the smallest carp I've seen today, but it doesn't matter. Um, we've got a mirror, which means I just need to catch a common and a ghosty. We've got about six pound on the board. 
which helps with the tea strain challenge and probably another challenge. I get confused now. I don't know. Harry, help yeah, me. Well, you've got weight. I've got weight. I've definitely got some weight. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and if I'm able to catch another fish in the same manner by stalking it and watching it take the bait, and that'll certainly help with the, the higher or lower. And you know what, I do think there is another chance of a, a stalking opportunity, so I'm gonna slip this little fella back and uh, try for one a bit bigger. A piece of slow sinking bread was well positioned in front of a group of larger fish. Then out of nowhere, a little scamp came up and grabbed it. Well, you know what? I've just seen the fish that took this bit of flake. And it looks about the same size as the last one. So I'm gonna have to make a call on this. <sighs> There's literally nothing in it. I'm gonna say bigger. Having said bigger, I don't think it is. We've been molested on the way in. Leave him alone. He doesn't <laughs> want it. <laughs> well, one thing's for certain, if I get another one, it'll definitely be bigger than that. Yay! Let's have a closer look at him. No, I think he's smaller than the first one. Nice fish, though. It's beautiful, isn't it? Lovely fish, that. No, he's five pound. Never mind. Oh, there we have it. Five pound. Um, doesn't really help me with my play your Cartwright challenge, but it's an awesome looking fish. Look at that. Cracking looking scaly. And that's now 11 pound on the board for the Abracadacurate challenge. Yes, I'm getting nodded at. So yes, I've got 11 pound on the board. So yeah, happy with that. We're getting there. Very, very, very slowly, we're getting there. <laughs> After slipping back the second fish, I checked a margin spot that I'd previously baited. That bush was crawling with them. I couldn't wait to stick one in there. I'm feeling that bush. I readied my kit and sweet corn hook baits were mounted on a simple knotless knot and lead clip setup. The plan was to wade down the margin and place the bait perfectly on the spot. As I made my way down the margin, unbeknownst to me, three fish melted away from the spot, one of which was a proper water pig. I think this is a good feature of this swim, isn't it? The, uh, the pool area on a day like this. It's just like the pool parties I throw, yeah. minus all the hot babes. <laughs> Bigger. No, 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 no. Ah. So it's been less than half an hour since I I waded and dropped that rig down the margin. And uh well, I've just had a take and, and lost one to a hook pull. And it was bigger. I don't think it felt huge. But it, it was it was certainly it certainly wasn't a five or six pounder. Never mind, try again. It's obviously 
It's obviously a nice little idea. It didn't take long to work. Doesn't matter. Right. Let's do that again. I feel like I haven't even got started yet. I really, I really don't. I've come to what I thought was my banker, big fish water. And um, I don't know, most of the fish we've seen have, have been small fish. It turns out there's a problem with the stock pond, a, a bit of an oxygen crash, and a lot of the fish got, the smaller fish got moved into the main lake to, to, uh, to save them and there is a lot of little fish swimming around and I think getting through to them bigger ones it is, good, it is going to be a lot harder than I thought it would be. All right. Bigger. But only just. That's it. Here he is. <laughs> it's marginally bigger. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Well, I called it at least. I said it was bigger than it is. <laughs> well, it's not one of the, the bigger fish that I've been seeing feeding down there, but it's definitely a step in the right direction and it's definitely bigger than five pounds. I don't know, maybe scraper doubles. But uh, we shall weigh him and find out. Angry. Look at that. Nine and three quarter. So, just under double figures this fish, which takes me up to just under 21 pound. I'm not sure what challenges this is helping me with. I'm, I'm confused already and I've got another four days of it, but uh, I'm sure it helps in some way. Day one was drawing to a close and although a few fish had graced my net, I still felt as though things weren't exactly going my way. So, to cheer me up, I ordered in a takeaway. Oh, we've got three dopper ponds as well. That's a diddler, um, sarg. Mushroom diddler. Diddler. Sarg, sarg diddler. That's a sarg diddler. Mushroom diddler. Have you got a mushroom diddler? Right. You haven't got a mushroom diddler? Mushroom diddler. And you've got a bag of diddlers. That must be your chicken Ridley, Ridley diddler. Right now, I'm feeling like today has been a waste. 20 pound into the challenge. I just feel like I've had no impact on it at all. I don't feel like I should have caught more fish or, or anything like that. In hindsight, I probably should have fished down that margin sooner. What part of this whole challenge uh, do you think will be the hardest? For me, it's, it would be catching them two 25 pounders because this was the venue I'd picked where I thought give me a great chance of catching two 25 pounders. And that isn't going to plan. So right now, that's all I'm thinking about, is just catching two 25 pounders. That's what I think is gonna be the hardest part. Well, I'm having a bit of a slight change of tactics here. I've uh, taken off the, the corn and uh, I'm now just fishing a standard boily bottom bait. Um, hopefully that will deter the attention of the, the smaller fish long enough for one of the big fish to come along and, uh, and pick it up. And I'm gonna weigh down the margin and bait up with a few handfuls of boilies as well. So uh, let's see if that does the trick. Around, 
Well, the change over to Boily definitely seemed to do the trick and we've got the biggest fish of the session so far. And it's one that I did call bigger as soon as I picked up the rod, but there's a reason we didn't get the fight on camera. And that's because I thought it was a bream. There are a few double figure bream in here and I was certain that's what I was playing, but I did call it bigger. So that, that does count though, doesn't it, Harry? Mm. You did you did say bigger, huh? Yeah. I did also say bream. You did but, also say bream. <laughs> but I did say bigger. Mm, you did say bigger. That counts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess. So yeah, this one um it weighed just under eighteen pounds, seventeen pounds fourteen ounces. So uh yeah, really pleased with that. Very encouraging. And um who knows, I might belt uh, that 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 twenty five pounder might not be uh so far away after all. Well good morning. It's uh ten to five. As you can see we're playing. We were playing. <laughs> Another fish. And as soon as I picked up the rod, I could tell it wasn't very big. I called it smaller. And uh, yeah, we've got another one of them, them little fellas. But uh, yeah, I feel like it's, in a way, it's a bit like one step forward and another step back. But at the same time, that's how many guesses now? Ugh. Is it three, three? Three in a row? So, yeah, for the um, play your carp right, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm doing okay. It's not adding much weight to the board, but um, yeah, it's, it's something. I guess it's, it's definitely that. It's definitely something. Still, keep stop, stop wriggling. <laughs> well, I've just weighed him, and he weighs seven pound two ounces. So, yeah, that's more weight for the abracadacurate and the tea strain challenge. Um, but I really desperately need a twenty-five pound plus if I'm to have any any sort of impact on this challenge at this early stage. The day before the carp had looked kind of frisky, but as soon as the sun began to rise, it seems things had moved on a little bit further and it was time to leave them to it. Well, we aren't even 24 hours into this challenge and things really aren't going to plan. And as far as I can see, they're not gonna get any better anytime soon because the fish have just started having sexy, sexy times. So I've already started packing away, away some of my kit. Um, there's no point fishing while the, while the fish are, are starting to spawn. So uh, it's time to get packed down and hit the road. Never one to stand in the way of a carp's sex life, 
we left Nuddock Wood behind. And after calling into Tesco's to get stocked up on supplies and following a brief fight with a shopping trolley, we then arrived at my rescue venue, Majestic Pole. With the fish visible on the surface and with floater fishing thankfully allowed, I grabbed the surface kit and was soon ready for action. No sooner had I got started when the wind picked up and this made the floater fishing very tough going. With just one aborted take for my efforts, I set off in search of other opportunities and thankfully I was able to find them. I think this is, this is more likely than the uh, up the other end, isn't it? That's a big fish, that. That is a big fish, biggest one I've seen. It, it, it looks pretty weedy there, I can't see the bottom, but all around it is, is a blanket weed. So I'm just rigging up a, a hinge stiff rig with a long-ish boom of 25 pound Camatex Soft. I'm just gonna fish this on a leg clip, so if that does plunge into the weed, then a, a stiff hook link would kind of like poke up out of the weed and then the, the hook link would always sat around all, all funny. Whereas this, if it does go into the weed, it will still fall and lie quite naturally on top of it. I've seen a really big fish down there as well. The biggest fish I've seen while I've been here, it's, it's certainly a 30 pounder. There are a few 30 pounders in the lake and uh, it's, it's got to be one of them. It's, it, it's by far bigger than anything else I've seen. So yeah, it's, it's, it's encouraging. I may not sound like I'm jumping around for, for joy right now. It's just been so frustrating, so frustrating. I'm just uh, hoping the next bite will turn things around. Just seen one of the biggest fish in the lake, fish known as, as Nelson. He's just glided over that, that spot. I just, I just ducked down, he hasn't seen me. I think it's safe to make a cast. I don't know what the bottom's like there. I think, judging by everything around it, it's just, it's just blanket weed. So I'm not expecting to feel any sort of donk or a drop or anything. Well, I think it's fair to say that worked quite well. I was, <laughs> I was just setting up an alarm to put the rod on. The rod's only been in the water less than five minutes and we're playing a fish. Oh. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> what was the last fish I had? Seven pounds. Yeah. I think we I think we both knew that though from the <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's anything that's seven pound in here, is there? No. Just sort of wallowing around. Nice humpy back fish that one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, that's more like it. Oh, that's more like it. <laughs> I don't think he's a 25 plus. I don't think, but I still feel very, very relieved. Oh, I don't know. It's certainly a 20 pounder. Short, fat fish, proper cool looking carp. Yeah! Right, let's get the mat, have a closer look at him.
twenty pound ten. But it's been a very frustrating day, so this fish has come as a, a mighty relief. Twenty pound ten ounces, uh, and I guessed it correctly that it was bigger than the previous fish I caught of seven pound. So that makes it four correct guesses in a row for the play your carp right part of the challenge. And it also puts some weight up to 65 pound to help with the abracadacuit and tea strain parts of the challenge. Could have done with this one being caught with the bait bucket roulette. Uh, because I needed, uh, well, I need two 20 pounders for the bait bucket roulette. Uh, but never mind. Um, I still need to catch two 25 pounders, of course. But um, either way, this is a massive step in the right direction. At this stage of the challenge, I felt as though things were definitely improving. I now had some good weight towards the abracadacuit and the tea strain challenge. And I was now just one correct guess away from passing play your cart right. But having said that, I still hadn't made any dent at all on the left-handed challenge or the bait bucket roulette. And I felt now was as good a time as any to get that bait bucket roulette challenge up and running. Well, I am very excited to be playing bait bucket roulette once again. And these are the prizes available today. I have here some fine particles, well, hemp and corn. Last time round, it was the, well, <laughs> that's my. Yeah, okay. So uh, last time round, we had um, natural baits maggots and worms, maggots aren't allowed here at Majestic, so instead we have some hemp and corn instead. <laughs> and then, boily wise, I have here, uh, yep, got some freezer baits, 15 mil, I've got some Odyssey, Pacific Tuna, and live system boilies. And then for the pop-ups, Harry has kindly given me one tub of uh, Northern specials which is what I actually caught that last fish on so yeah I'd be happy to use them. So these are now going to get put into buckets without me knowing which is in which bucket and we are ready to play Bait Bucket Roulette! Can I have a proper introduction please? And today's contestant is Mark from Middlesbrough. He likes warm sunny days, kittens, and having pool parties with hot babes. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to get straight to it really, because to be honest, I, I will be quite happy with whatever. So I'm just going to go middle, I think. So, oh. Not much weight in this, I know what this is. <laughs> yep. The uh, yellow pop ups, Northern Specials, that's what I caught the last fish on. Um, yep, I'm more than happy with that. So, in keeping with the bait bucket roulette tradition, I had to throw a bit of a curveball, a bit of a rig curveball in there as well. Mark, do you remember? Last time on the bait bucket roulette. Yeah. Where we did, we did rig, rig roulette, was it? Or yeah. Rig item roulette. So what you're saying is you've just watched me tie up three rigs. Yes. You've just watched me tie up three rigs now. I remember when we did it and it wasn't part of the challenge. Yeah, but you remember when we did it. I remember when we did that. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. All oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to do something else. Yeah? Gonna do hook roulette. Okay. So, in my pocket, yeah. I've got three packets of hooks. Have you? Numbered one, two, and three. Right, number two. I'm, not even, I'm straight in with it. Right. Number two. Yeah. Like you went in for middle for diddle? Middle for diddle, I've gone middle yeah. for diddle again. Right, number two. I, don't, I can't remember which number two is. Number two is 
a short curve. That's going to work well on a hinge diff rig. When I ended up with the short curves, initially I wasn't too happy about it. It doesn't really help. I wanted to be using hinge stiff rigs. Yeah. Not really on a hinge stiff. I'm still going to fish a hinge stiff, just to be awkward. Not really feeling that. No. 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 No, I'm really not actually. Ah. And I felt that pattern wouldn't really enable me to fish them how I'd like. I'm I'm going with what I was going to go with. I am not going to change to suit your satisfactory satisfaction or whatever but it didn't really turn out that way ha ha <laughs> <laughs> the rigidity straightened out perfectly didn't work out for you did it that's it's absolutely fine the hooks were absolutely spot on i actually think something? i prefer that that looks better <laughs> that's look awesome better. isn't it wasn't really what I was hoping for. I was hoping he was going to be chucking out something that he wasn't happy with at all. We weren't expecting that, were you? <laughs> head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really happy with that, actually. Really happy with it. Thanks for that. rigged up and ready to go and the setup is pretty much exactly the same as what I caught the 20 pounder on except I have needlessly had to change my hook. Um, I've got a, a stiff section of doubled over 30 pound rigidity and the boom section is around 12 inches long of 25 pound Camatex soft. I'm going to fish two rods in the soft blanket weed where I've seen quite a few fish showing and a third rod is going on the margin to my right here on a clear spot that I, uh, I pre-baited and the rig is pretty much the same apart from it'll have a, a shorter boom section of 25 pound Camatex semi-stiff and that's it I'm ready to go so uh, let's get going. switcheroo I have yes I don't know I just felt like the old bobbins I was using wasn't giving me the, the success I desired it's and that 20 using no bobbins exactly and looking look looking back at where I've gone wrong and I couldn't put my finger on it and all I could think of was must have been the bobbins so that's where we're at so I ditched the bobbins gone with swingers let's see this scent's there somewhere. It's a tench or a pike. Or small. I'm saying it's smaller or a different species. <laughs> the bobbin was up and down and up and down. I thought it was a bit of a savage liner. Picked up the rod and then was met with a little bit of resistance. I'm still not sure what I'm attached to. It doesn't feel very carp-like at the moment. If it is, I think it's a small one. It is a carp and it is a small one. Which, it's not a tench, is it? I think it's a little common. It's a common. I don't know, they must have put, oh, it's a little common. It is a carp and it's a common. <laughs> this is so bad. <laughs> That's the smallest fish I've seen in here. But I tell you what, I'm really, I'm really happy about it. I really, I really want to see this go in the net. Get in. Yeah! I just flicked a lot of fluff on my face. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Which means that's five guesses in a row. Is that that's what the challenge was, wasn't it? Five, 
Yeah. Five in a row. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So I've passed the play your car right challenge. You have. Yeah. I was actually easier this time round than, than last time. And I thought last time, I thought there was no way I was going to do it. And got, well, you diddled me by an ounce, didn't you? Which made me <laughs> fail. So yeah, so that's now, so with the um, tea strain challenge, I have a common and I have a mirror. Um, I don't think there's any ghosties in the lake, so that, that can't happen, but I have a common, I have a mirror, I have more weight on the, on the board. Yeah, this, this is good. This is good. So one, one challenge passed, four to go. It may have been one of the smallest carp in Majestic, but that little stocky common was absolutely invaluable. Um, it meant I now had another strain under my belt. It was the first common I'd caught so far, and for all I knew, it could be the only common I caught during this challenge. Plus, more importantly, it now meant I had passed the play your carp right. Although the challenge had been going pretty well, I had been doing some maths in my head. And while I had been making progress, what I hadn't realized is I was also on the brink of failure. So I now had a proposition for Harry. For the Abracadacura challenge, I need two 25 pounders. I'm currently on 75 pound roughly. I've got to reach a total of 130 pounds in weight, but not exceed 135, yeah? Yeah. Well, if my next bite is a 20 pounder, yeah. I still need to catch two 25s. Well, that'll take me over 135 pounds. So if my next bite isn't a 25 pounder, and the bite after that isn't a 25 pounder, I failed. Everything. Well, if your next bite isn't a 25 pounder, you failed. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't even need to have another one after that. <laughs> no. I don't know why it's only just sort of like dawned on me that. If the expat is a 20 pounder, but not a 25, count that for the bait bucket roulette where I need a 20, but not count it for the abracadacura. I see where you're going with that. I mm. see what you mean. Mm. But I think the only way, the only way that that would actually work is for if you catch a 25, that doesn't count to your bait bucket roulette. Okay. Yeah, see, I, I did want that though. <laughs> well, <laughs> that, no, you couldn't, you couldn't have that. That's yeah. It wouldn't. It wouldn't be fair. Okay. You can't. You can't give with one hand and take with the other. I don't know. You can give with one hand and take with another. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> of course you can. You're say you've tried it. You can, Of course you can. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. I'm confused. I have no oh, idea what's happening. <laughs> People at home are thinking, what the, what? <laughs> so just to clarify, at this moment, I decided to let Mark change the rules. For as long as the Abracadacura challenge is going, any fish that is over 25 pounds will count only to that and any fish that is between 20 and 25 pounds will only count to the bait bucket roulette. Why I let that rule change go, I don't know.
angry, angry. As you can tell, we're playing a fish, an angry fish. This definitely isn't a small, stocky common. Right, there he is. Oh, hello. Hello. That's not a bad fish at all. Yes! Oh! That isn't a bad fish at all. It's got a big ball of weed on its face. I'm just trying to judge how big he is. You know what? I reckon that could be 25 plus. I really do. Ooh. <laughs> that looks like a decent fish to me. I think we've got a 25 plus. Yeah. Right, let's have a look. That's 25 plus. Oh, bloody hell, and the rest. Yeah, like I said, I don't want to be saying silly things, but I think I know what fish it is. Yeah, that's 25 plus. What a fish though, eh? Right. Here we go. Twenty-seven, twelve. Yes! Look at that. I'm so chuffed with that fish. So chuffed. With a 25 pluser now under my belt, that was a firm dent in the Abra Kadakura challenge. And for me, that had already justified my decision to reroute and come to Majestic. Well, Majestic Pool has certainly been very kind to me in the short time that I've been here. Three fish landed, two 20 pounders, including this one, 27 pound, 12 ounces. I'm absolutely made up. Ooh, made up with this fish. I really do think like we've now kicked things up a notch. Okay. Yeah, I feel like I've got momentum on my side now. And I've now got one of the all important 25 pound plus fish that I desperately needed to pass this challenge. If one more to go. For me, that finishing line is, is almost in sight. I've got a tin of shortbread in the band as well. A tin, a tin of shortbread. Tin of short. Well, why haven't we got it here? Why is it in the van? I was keeping it for a special occasion. You can't just break out shortbread willy nilly. It has to be, you know, special, special moments. I might have one piece each. One. Pe it's not really. One, one finger. Yeah, but one finger's just, you can't just have one finger. That's just like a tease, isn't it? It's a pause. I do, yeah, I suppose I have more of a three finger sort of a <laughs> <laughs> <Three. laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually three when I think about it. I'd usually just have as many as I can, like, really? just keep on going. Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> like that. Oh, yeah.
It was getting late in the day and I was feeling pretty tense. There were fish in the area. I was getting liners, but bites just weren't forthcoming. Had I have had the option of introducing a bit of bait, I'm sure things would have been different at this point. Um, but the clock was ticking. I had to be off Majestic the following morning and I still needed to catch two 20 pounders and a 25 pluser. Your cat's a bit of a pretentious t isn't it? I mean, it's on Instagram page. Well, the other cat is uh, is a bit left out because the other one doesn't have a, a uh, Instagram page. Well, it's all right. He's very grounded and down to earth. What's wrong with my cat having an Instagram what page? What a pretentious b <laughs> Do you follow it? No. Pets, pets that create... Why don't you Pets that create cat? Instagram pages. Uh, pets who create Instagram pages are very intelligent. Really? Yeah. Your cat doesn't look it. Well, your dog couldn't create its own Instagram page, couldn't it? Could it? It's just had a haircut by a dog and it's completely changed since it had a haircut. It looks awesome, actually. I actually stroke it now. It your is... dog hates me. It hates everyone. Everyone. Yeah, but especially you. But that, but that, my cat having an Instagram page is just as pretentious as you having an Instagram. No, page. it's not. It's, it's not different. How? Because lots of human beings have Instagram pages to share. Lots of cats have Instagram. No, they don't. <laughs> yes, they do. Oh, only don't like the search, Kardashians of cats have search, Instagram. Search like no. cats of Instagram. Right? No. I refuse. I might come up with yours. No, no. I don't wish to search for cats. Right, you're going to enjoy this, youth. Why? Because it's the best decaf tea in existence from a brand that you wouldn't normally associate with great tea. I actually put this on my Instagram page recently saying, just discovered the world's best decaf. And people are like, you're mad, you don't know what you're on about. I'm like, we'll see. And the same people that said all that commented the next day and just went, we were wrong. Take it all back. So that's, that's I reckon that, bear in to decaf, yeah, it's, you, you're smelling the aroma. It has got one, hasn't it? It's, it has got one, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's still not normal tea. Yeah, it's not, but... Yeah, see, I think that's good. Yeah. You're not impressed, so it doesn't matter. Right, forget that then. I'm always trying to impress you. I'm always failing. I always come up short, don't I? Yeah. I think the temperature it's at matters as well. See, I think that's too hot to be able to actually taste it properly. I can just taste hotness. We should maybe have, we should have really had a timer going, a bit like with the shortbread last time round. Yeah, but and that see. just went on forever. It didn't, people loved it. They loved it, they did. So uh, maybe, uh, if anything, I think we should have, could have extended it even longer. Like, I think we should do with this, have several cups of tea, a timer going, sample it at every 30 second intervals until we get to the optimum taste temperature. Well, shall we do that? Then? Yeah, so I'll start again. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> every 30 seconds for 10 minutes, we'll give you an update. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has to be from hot, <laughs> from hot to cold. <laughs> no, 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 wait. No, people minutes. need to know. People need to know. So from hot, piping hot to pretty much cold, every 30 seconds, I'll rank the flavour from naught to 10. <laughs> And people would like to know that. <laughs> They'd like to see it. It'll make cracking viewing. <laughs> it will, yeah, definitely. Right, let's do this. The night drew in fast, which was a good thing because I was now super excited to take on the tea temperature taste trials. This was going to be amazing. I think we, I think we start the clock from when, the, when it, it's poured. 
I reckon. Yeah, that probably makes sense. But you could <clears throat> do it from when you add the milk. Yeah, because it's not done until you... Exactly. So... But I want to time the dunkage time. Dunkage so, time? Of the bag. Oh. Stewage time, whatever. So, and I'm gonna go now. <laughs> so this, this is very scientific. I'm doing yours as well, but I, I'm really timing mine. Yeah. Although yours was just 10 seconds behind mine. So, you know. Okay. You do the maths. Okay. Okay, let's just leave that there for all to see. Right, 25 seconds, that's 25 seconds. <laughs> um, How long are you leaving this? Probably, I reckon four minutes. But what, to, to brew? Mm -hmm. So I'm supposed to film this for yes. four minutes? Yeah. Yep, four minutes. Well, you um, need to fill it with so You need to fill those four minutes really? with something. You need to be entertaining okay. for four All right, minutes. Then. That's 51 seconds. 51 <laughs> seconds so far. So, not long to go. <laughs> there is a long time. It's not. It's not long four to go. Four minutes is a long time. We've just passed the minute mark, everybody. We have just <laughs> passed the minute mark for the, for the stewage. <laughs> this is such a load of rubbish. It's not. It's not. People will thank me for this. Okay, I'm going to start, I'm going to commence stirring in five, four, three, two, one, stir. There we go, and I'm going to stir for, I'm going to stir for exactly ten seconds. That's two, one, and stirring <laughs> has stopped now. I'm not going to stir Harry's, I shall stir Harry's. I'm not. This isn't in this. This isn't in the experiment. It's purely my mug. We are now approaching the one minute fifty second oh mark. My God. One minute forty nine. There we go. Everybody. One minute fifty. <coughs> one minute fifty seconds. Um, so I think what I'll do at the two minute mark is to give it another stir. Anti clockwise. There we go. Two <laughs> seconds. So again, this will be a ten second stir. Oh, I two, can't one, put this in. Zero, there we go. So now on two minutes and 20 seconds. <laughs> and I'm going to leave this for, for four minutes. So this it's going is in the so it's long. It's not. It's not. Don't you dare edit this. <laughs> that's the one. At that 10 minutes, that's the prop. That's when you can down it. 10 minutes. Well, why have you edited that? There you go. That was great viewing, everyone. Thank you so much for, for staying with us through that experiment. I've had, a, I've had a great time. Harry has as well. So I hope it's been insightful into the, 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 the world of tea drinking and how to get the best from your brew. I feel like you've stood in the way of science there. Oh, ten, honestly, honestly, <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> ten minutes. <laughs> Shortly after midnight, the left-hand rod burst into life, and before long, I was slipping the net under another sizable mirror. Oh, I don't know. I've got my hump on it. That's not a bad one. Oh, oh yes. Well, it's just after midnight and the left hand rod, the rod that did the, the bites yesterday and last night, has done it again and we've got a decent fish here. While I was playing the fish, I was shouting Harry, even though he's bivvied up literally right behind me. He was dead to the world. He must have been asleep on his, on his good ear because he, uh, he wasn't waking up for this one. He literally managed to wake up just as it was going into the net. So I think we managed to get that bit on film. But I'm looking at it here. It is definitely a 20 pounder. Um, but look at how wide it is across its back. I don't know, it, it might be, it, it could be, it could be bigger. It could be bigger. We need to, uh, we need to get him out. 
take a closer look at him and uh, see what the scales say. I reckon it's very, very close to 25 pound. I wouldn't like to say if it's just under or just over. It's the two 25s I've been dreading more than anything. So if this is... <laughs> Oh, yes. 27.8. Is that what you're giving me? Yeah. 27.8. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's I'm well chuffed. 227s. I am well chuffed. Look at that. Oh, yes. <laughs> so. Managed to get the two 25 pound plus fish that I needed to pass the Abracadacura challenge. But to be honest, I've absolutely no idea what weight that puts me on. I needed to catch 130 pound a carp without exceeding it by five pounds. I have no idea what weight I'm on. No idea at all. I think I am close. I have a horrible feeling I'm just under by ounces, but uh, I'll have to sit down and I've got all the ounces logged on my phone and I'll have to sit down and work it out because right now I've just caught an awesome 27 pound plus northern mirror and I'm over the moon. For me, a Yorkshire 25 plus is a big fish. You've had a brace of Yorkshire 25 yeah. pluses. Or well, a brace of Yorkshire upper 20s, really. I still got a proper buzz out of catching them. Proper buzz. It's a big fish, isn't it, for, for Yorkshire? Seems even more special in my homeland. <sighs> you know, I'm that happy, I'm going to give myself a cheeky finger. <laughs> I might even give you one, too. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, I'll allow myself one finger, because I don't know if I'll actually pass the challenge yet. And if I have, then pff, as many fingers as I can handle. <laughs> Wallop. As it's Christmas, this was actually a gift. It was from Gemma and Sam. Mark and Harry, a very carpy thank you. Love Gemma and Sam. Did they put love? No, I made that bit up. <laughs> <laughs> but it does show a sort of level of affection, doesn't it? Giving someone shortbread. For me, it's the highest level of affection you can show, giving someone shortbread. Do you want me to do the tea experiment again with this one? Or? <laughs> no. No, sure? <laughs> I, I don't mind going for a little bit longer if you felt it was too short last time. <laughs> <laughs> Who's doing the totting up? Are you doing the totting up? Do I trust you to do the totting up? We both do the totting up, see if we get the same, same results anyway. So I was on 45, 14. So 83 and 45. Ooh. 45, 128. <sighs> Plus what, what are the answers? One pound four. 129 pound four? Hmm. <laughs> 129 pound four. Mark's emotion at that time had gone from complete euphoria to being really down in the in the dumps, 12 ounces short. How how unlucky is that? He didn't know what to do at this point. Gutted. <sighs> so I need to go somewhere where I can, I've got to catch four pounder. There is that little pond next to us. I have no idea how big they are. I think most of them are doubles. Oh, I feel gutted. I cheer myself up with a finger. Those at least.
live with me I walk through the streets chasing nothing much lately Nobody's a lover if nobody's crazy Do you know how you used to fantasise about Johnny Depp? <laughs> Excuse me, so I spit out my coffee. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> right. Yeah, but yeah. I wouldn't say I fantasised about him. We've had discussions. Well, yeah, that's when you ask, ask me, you say, here's mine, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it used to be Johnny Depp, yeah? Uh, yeah, out of anyone, yeah. Yeah. Is it still Johnny Depp? I'm just curious. I've probably I've probably moved on. Yeah. All oh, right, like that, is it? Just because he's getting a bit older. Mm. Bidding him off for someone younger, I'm guessing. Yeah, he's just stopped dressing as a pirate. Ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I see that. So who? So, yeah. I... Probably Zac Efron. No, you can't have him. Why? He's mine. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? No, nah, he's, my, he's my man. Fantasy. Mantasy. He's my mantasy. Yes. Right? Yeah. Why? Why? Have you seen Baywatch the movie? <laughs> oh my god. I mean, The Rock's obviously a legend in it and awesome. He comes, I'd say he's second. Mm. He's second. Definitely. Yeah. But I mean, a, a rock Efron sandwich. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Won't be much left of that feeling, would there? I don't know what, what has happened to the challenge. What has happened? You can imagine that though, can't you? <laughs> At this point, to complete the Abraca's accurate challenge, I needed a fish of no less than 12 ounces, but no bigger than five pound 12 ounces. My best and closest option was over on Little Majestic next door. This was high risk though because the lake is home to lots of double figure carp. But if I could do it there, then it would save me so much time and also stand me in good stead to pass the other challenges. So I set up a scaled down running rig, baited my rig with corn and tried my luck. There's odd little fizz coming up. I've seen a few fish showing as well, but they've mostly been uh, double figure fish. But we have seen a few, few small ones that are definitely sort of only two, three, four pound max. Just seen one there about an ounce. I'm just uh, gonna keep pinging in a bit of bait. Hopefully it'll turn up. I can't afford to give it very long. Yes, yes, yes. Oh no. Oh no. I can't work out. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't work out what had happened. And I'll tell you what, it's probably about it may be a pound, maybe. It's like the perfect weight. It's literally the perfect weight. Oh, it's not a pound, is it? Come on, 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 come on. <laughs> come on. Yes! Oh, I'm buzzing that. That to me looks the perfect size. Oh yeah. That's got to be. We need 12 ounces. Oh, oh, well clear. <laughs> oh, come on, hey, one pound six ounces. So that will be the abracadacurate. That is pretty damn accurate. 
abracadabrous <laughs> as well, isn't it? Yeah. So, brilliant. There. That's the abracadabrous past in style. That was great fun, actually. That really was great fun. Not the biggest carp I've caught, but I certainly remember him. Awesome. So with the Abracadabra challenge in the bag, I still had three more challenges left to complete. These were the cack handed challenge, bait bucket roulette, and the tea strain. As I was packing away my kit, I did feel as though I was gaining momentum, but with less than 36 hours remaining, it really was gonna be a race against the clock. With 2.20 still to catch, I had a last minute change of plan for the next venue and I was now making my way down to Cambridgeshire to Abbey Lake. So after a two and three quarter hour drive, we are here at Abbey Lake and it's much warmer down here, temperatures in the low 20s. I've already had a walk around and, and found quite a few fish actually. Um, so I think now I'm going to ask Harry for my cack handed challenge before I start unloading any, any kit out the van. I want to know what I need. So Harry, what is my cack handed challenge this time? Well, I think considering it is a bit warmer down here, mm -hmm. I think a good one would be catch two carp off the top left-handed. Hmm, okay. That might be quite tricky. It's pretty pretty windy, pretty blustery down here. I'm sure I'm sure you'll manage. Okay. Well hopefully the wind will ease off a bit at some point. Okay that that's that sounds a lot more reasonable than your first cack handed challenge that you set me. The first one was reasonable it until wasn't. you mucked it up. Mm, well. This good. one's reasonable until you <laughs> mucked it up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, no, that, that sounds so two fish of any size off the top. Left yeah. handed. Yeah. I can't mess it up as, as, as bad as last time. I can't. That is impossible, <laughs> I'd say. Right, great. I'm going to get unloaded. Yes, it really didn't take that much encouragement actually to get them to take off the top. I've got fish taking over there and fish taking over there. I'm really excited. I just don't I just hope I can get a cast without it landing right in them right in the, amongst them all and spooking everything. That's my worst nightmare right now. Seeing all these fish like that and the cast just going. I soon set up my favoured surface rig, which comprised of an extra large bolt bubble a short two foot hook link of 12 pounds zig and float line and a trimmed down duo floater hook bait was mounted on a size 10 zig and floater hook. Okay. This just feels weird. Have you done this since? <laughs> since no, of course time. I haven't. Why would I? <laughs> Why would I do it since then? Well, I'm happy with that. It's got no way to eat the fish, which is good. And because I've cast it so far, it enables me to, accuracy doesn't really matter that much because I'm now able to steer it exactly where I want it. So I'm steering it on the, on the path where them, where them fish are, where them floaters are drifting. There. Literally had a, had a fish come up for the hook bait first cast. I 
I don't know what to do. <laughs> I booked one. Oh, this feels, I'm going to really concentrate whereas this like would come naturally. I'm going to really, really concentrate now. As we've gone on, I've gained, I've gained confidence. <clears throat> that cast landed perfectly. Moved it into position and literally within about, about 10 seconds, <laughs> the fish came up and took it. That's not ideal. Um, my left arm's aching, <laughs> which, uh, it does, it does, it does it, well, it feels very cack-handed, which I guess is the object of it. I'm having to think about everything I do. It's not coming naturally at all. Here he comes. Oh, I've, got the wrong, I've got the net the wrong side of me. <laughs> <laughs> right. This time, this time, Get in, I can't quite go. Yes! Yes! Ooh! Ooh, might be a bit bigger than I thought. Look at that! That's awesome! I'm not gonna lie, I'd be glad when I can go back to fishing right handed, but I don't know. How do you think I did, Harry? <laughs> Yeah, it's um, yeah. Like I said, I was just having to think a lot more about what I was doing. But like with the casting, once I'd had a few casts and that I could see they were going, I think it was just maybe a little bit of belief. That's all I needed. And uh, yeah, we've got one. This certainly goes some way to make up for the frustrations on the first cack handed challenge. Weight wasn't important this time round. We've got a cracking dark mirror of 18 and a half pound. Really pleased with this. And my confidence is definitely building with the left handedness. And I actually think I could get this part of the challenge wrapped up. Don't want to tempt fate here, but I think I get it wrapped up in time for tea. Forecast rain or anything, was it? It looks a bit like a tropical storm. Is it brewing? Well, I think I jinxed myself by saying I'll have it all wrapped up by tea time. It's just started raining, and the forecast is for it to absolutely chuck it down pretty much all night, um, starting mainly in about 40 minutes time. So that isn't going to help with the surface fishing one bit. And we've got to be off here first thing in the morning. So it's not like we can stay tomorrow and have another go. Um, so yeah, I'm in a bit of a, a rush. I want the, I've managed to get fish feed in, in another area. I want to get moved over there try and get one before before this rain comes. Right, this could be this could be the last chance. Probably is now. That landed way too close to the fish. Luckily, it didn't make a massive splash, but it landed too close to the fish for my liking. And the rain's getting heavier as well. Well, I just, I just got the spot rod there, and I was just swapping, just about to swap the handle over to get some get some small pellets out there and uh, 
had a big explosion on the surface. And sure enough, we're playing, we're playing a fish. Just trying to steer him around these reeds here. Right at the back of them. I'm hoping he's going to swim out on his own accord. No, he's not. Is that boat chained up, is it? We ain't landing this one then. All I can do really is put the rod down, get the waders on, and hope he doesn't come off. Right, wader up. He's still on for the time being. I'm hoping if I actually go through the reed bed, it's gonna, ooh, <laughs> it's gonna uh, spook it out into open water. Oh, that is soft. I'm sinking. This isn't as easy as I thought it would be. And I don't even know if I've still got a fish on the end, to be honest. I don't know how much you can see <laughs> of me. Can you see me at all, Harry? <laughs> it's now in open water. I could be doing all this um, right-handed and you wouldn't have a clue. But I'm not. I'm holding it with both hands, shut up! <laughs> After a lengthy battle in the reeds and screwing up one microphone, I was finally able to land my second cack-handed fish. We've got him. We've got him. <laughs> and pass the challenge. And it really was in stark contrast to the first time we did that challenge. But I've got him. I've got him. And that is the cack-handed challenge passed. It was a double. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mark wasn't quite as bad at fishing cack-handed on the surface as he was fishing cack-handed on the bottom. And I definitely think that fishing on the surface cack-handed was an advantage for that particular challenge. So perhaps that was my bad and I should have made him fish on the bottom. So. That will be the cack handed challenge passed. That just leaves the bait bucket roulette, tea strain. Is that it? Yep. Two challenges left, that's all. Ooh. And 24 hours remaining. I like my chances. <laughs> Right, that's a left-handed one wrapped up. So it's time once again to play Bait Bucket Roulette. You put a little jingle or something on that. No. Please, no. I insist. No. You will. I didn't put a jingle on it last time. And that's, and that's why it was such a massive failure. Would you rather, would you rather stay? I watch you be and slowly walk away. Well, I just moved round on the back of the wind, ready for the night ahead. And despite the drop in temperature and the rain, the fish seem to be very happy in, the, in those upper layers. I'm watching fish cruising around now with the backs out the water. So I'm only allowed to fish uh, yellow pop ups as singles, no bait. So I've tied up a couple of zigs. I've just whittled down a, a yellow Northern Special pop-up. I'm going to fish them just under the surface, and uh, I think there's a chance we could uh, we could nick a fish here. Well, that uh, it didn't take long for that single yellow zig to work, and to get a fish so quickly did feel good but with it not being a 20 pounder i know i shouldn't say it but i did feel a little bit disappointed yeah well that was a bit of excitement but it's not a 20. 
So, yeah. Bit unlucky maybe, I don't know. But uh, it's nice that the zig worked, but um, it, doesn't, it doesn't help me at all in any way. It's about, um, it's probably about 15 pound. Time was very much slipping away and I was beginning to wonder now whether this challenge was within my reach. I got another one on the other yellow zig. <laughs> Played out two yellow zigs, two bites. This fish felt much heavier and went on a long, slow, powerful run towards the island. With a snag tree on the corner and only a light hook link, I felt as though I may be in trouble. And you think your luck is not gonna go your way. This is one of them times. It snagged me on the island. Oh well, that was short lived. <sighs> oh. Right. That was a better fish, without a doubt. It's the first one that's really, really pulled back. I think, uh, I think that's it for the, the zigs tonight. And every now and then I watch it all break down. Let's take it back together as best as I can. I can't be a lover as a broken man No, I can't be a lover as a broken man This tit. <laughs> what was it? Big moth just flapping around. What's it doing? Oh, f it, get out. <laughs> You're an angry man this evening. <laughs> lights are attracting all the flies. You've got a light on, haven't you? Yeah, but it's You've not got like. Two lights on. Yeah, Why but look you? at that it's thing. Like yeah, it's a bit different to that. I'm still feeling a little bit wounded about losing that fish. Um, I know you, you can't say you never know how big it is until you land it, but having passed the um, play your carp right challenge with flying colours, I think I can say that I can say how big <laughs> it was. And um, it, it was certainly bigger than anything I've, I've hooked uh, since being here. It did. I had to put a weight on it, it certainly felt like 20 plus. I've got two rods just on single yellow pop-ups out to where I've seen fish cruising around and because I have seen them cruising around and I've, I've had them two bites on zigs, so I've left one on a zig. Um, but I'd love to be fishing over some bait. Uh, I, I would. I just wish I could have put out, even if it was just a few spots of pellet and corn and chopped up boily, just, I feel like it's a little bit, I wouldn't say quite, not quite a pub chuck because I, I, I'm fishing a single hook bait in the area where I've seen fish, but I wish I could, uh, I just wish I could fish over a bit of bait really. Um, yeah, and if I don't catch tonight, then I'm going to be going to the next venue fishing exactly the same way. So yeah, I am. I am feeling the, the the pressure going into the last last night. 
I, I just, I just want just a little bit of luck. Just a little bit of luck. And um, I feel that's what it's going to be really. If I do get a take on them, on them single hook baits, I think there will be a, a little bit of luck involved. Oh, your light! It's literally it's just a homing beacon for every moth and fly. When they come into my light, then they're not. The, the yeah, but your flight, your, your light is on my face, and that's just. Look at the. Get the light oh, off. No. Get the light off. You've been a. D Look at them. Look at them. Turn the light off. No. You're doing it just to be an asshole. Look. They just sit shouting out sheltering from the rain. It's nothing to do with the light. Turn it off. Well, if you think you're getting any more brews for this session, you can think again, because that ain't happening. Turn the <laughs> off! <laughs> <laughs> Did you get wet when it was raining and you were putting your rods out? A little bit, a little bit. Just damp more than anything. That doesn't bother me. What is bothering me is you shining that light in here so that the bivvy's absolutely full of flies and moths and mozzies and midges and <laughs> knows what else. <laughs> well, I'm going to have myself another cuppa. Shame you're not. Oh, that's a bit petty, isn't it? Is it? Is it? You just turned your light on. Yeah, and that little... Them even more. When we had this little light on, there wasn't a single fly in here. You put that on and... Won't need much water in this kettle. I think that should be enough for a mug. Fly, fly, fly into the flames and die. <laughs> 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 Trying to concentrate the light around the stove so they all fly into that. And you're also encouraging them by sock. With a little sock. Fly, fly, fly. Fly into the flames and die. <laughs> <laughs> it's not working, is it? Fly, 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 fly into the flames and die. <laughs> ah, it's working, look. Are you getting this on? Are you getting it? I can't see any of oh. The rain continued right through the night and no bites were forthcoming. But at first light, my Zigrod receives another take. With that fish wallowing around in front of me, I could see it was clearly over 20 pound and for no reason whatsoever the hook just pulled. Mark was having an absolute nightmare. I can't help but hold Harry responsible for that, making me use hooks that I wouldn't ordinarily be using for my, for my zig fishing. Um, I can't think of who else or what else to blame, really. I was mortified. At, at this stage, with what had happened the night before as well, I was absolutely devastated. We have to be off here in, within the next four hours. So I need, really I need two 20s in the next four hours. That's, that's pretty much how it lies at the moment. So I just changed another rod over to a Zig. It's only been in the water a few minutes. So hopefully it's given me a chance to redeem myself after that, that loss just five minutes ago. When I woke up this morning, 
There's just that many fish cruising around in, in the upper layers. We had that much rain through the night. All that cold water going, going in sinks to the bottom, which means that the, the upper layers are, are going to be the warmest, the warmest part. And that's why the that's why they're cruising around like they are. I haven't seen it, but it's not a 20 pounder. A brick and all that. No, that's not the one. Play your car price, that's the one. <laughs> still, you've been at it for five days and you're still going to. I've got to take on the other rod as well. The other zig's away. Kicking oh. off on the zig ring. Loving it, aren't they? Wouldn't it be good if this is a, these are both 20s? Ooh, that one might just be a 20 pounder. What, the one that you got on? Yeah, that might be a scraper 20, this one. You're hoping for a double take at 20. Yeah. <laughs> that would be awesome. I reckon that's a scraper 20. Oh, looks like the other one's gone. That's a shame. Oh! Well, I did have a fish another rod, and it's come off. <laughs> and it's gone again! <laughs> what the hell? That is ridiculous. That is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they're taking a fly hatch or something like that. They're just, there's just backs all over the place. I think that's come off as well. <laughs> I don't think that one's still on. Right, come on, let's have you in. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Yes! Right. <laughs> the margins are pretty deep. Leave the net there. Is this fish still on? I don't think so, but... Oh, yes. Yeah? No, just a big ball of weed. <laughs> nah, don't mean the weed. But while that fish is in the net, I'm going to... Um, get this zig straight back out there. Well, this is absolutely ridiculous. Now it was kicking right off. I just tied up a fresh zig after I had that, them two takes on that one cast and um, got it back out. I was just about to deal with the fish in the net and the rod I just cast out ripped off. Absolutely crazy to say, all I'm doing is just chucking out whittled down yellow pop-ups on zigs to an area where there's, there's fish cruising about. It, it's, it's absolutely crazy. It's very close. It might, it might scrape 20 pound the one in the net. This one is bigger. Oh no, I've got to take on the other one as well. The rod that's on the bottom. It's proper kicking off. I've just had a take on a rod which was just a single yellow pop up cast to the edge of them reeds over there. This is mental. I can't rush this fish. I've seen this fish. I know it's way over 20 pounds. Mark had turned this challenge on its head in a matter of minutes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Oh, I reckon that's it. I don't even need to weigh that one. I know he's over 20 pound. We will weigh him, obviously, but that's, that's a comfortable 20 pounder. And I think, I think the one in the net, I reckon that might just scrape as well. I reckon that's it. It seems now as though I, I couldn't put a foot wrong and I'd gone from feeling right down in the dumps to thinking that the carp gods were now giving me a, a helping hand. I'm pretty sure this is long gone.
Right, let's make it all official. Let's get them out, get them weighed, and see what the scores on the doors are. Twenty-five ten. Yeah. <laughs> if that one's twenty-five, well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not getting ahead of myself. <laughs> oh, I like his fin. Spike. This is Spike. Look at that. Of a character fish. So oh, here we are, 25 pound, 10 ounces, proper solid, chunky fish. I'm absolutely buzzing with this one. And it's been a crazy morning's fishing. Um, I managed to get two bites on one rod. <laughs> um, I mean, while I was playing this fish, the other rod went and, oh, it's, well that's happened, I think that happened twice. Um, disappointed obviously to not to land all those fish but um, I'm over the moon with this absolutely over the moon I feel tense uh. oh <laughs> I said it was close. 20 pounds, 13 ounces. Yeah! Well, that is the bait bucket roulette challenge past. 20 pounds, 13. And there we have it. That is the bait bucket roulette challenge past. 20 pound, 13 ounce, lovely dark mirror. Ah, I know I've said it before, but it's, this morning's fishing has just, it's just blown me away. I wish I didn't have to pack up and go somewhere else, but I do because I need to catch a ghost carp to pass the tea strain challenge. So I'm gonna slip this fella back, have a brew and a cheeky finger and I need finger shot, but and I need to start researching venues nearby to catch a ghosty. There's only about eight hours of the challenge remaining. I had planned on doing this part of the challenge yesterday, so I'm way behind. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I need to get researching and get planning. I always get some dry underpants on. Sodden my undies. Absolutely sodden. So there was now just a ghost carp standing in the way of me passing this challenge and time was very quickly running out. So do you know where we're going? I do. I do. I did have quite a few venues lined up that would give me a very good chance of catching a ghosty, but there just wasn't enough time to even get there, let alone try and catch one. I made a phone call to Craig from the Matrix team, and he recommended a lake just half an hour away that he said would give me a fantastic chance of bagging one. We're going to a place called Rookery Waters. I'm going to hit the road and try and get this challenge completely wrapped up, done and dusted, passed, done, finito. Can't wait.
having got to the next venue, I paid my day ticket and was given some advice from the guy in the tackle shop as to which leg would give me the best chance of catching a ghostie. It turns out it was this one. So here I am. There's one. Two. There's two of them. And there's a few other fish with them. There's one. Two. Three. Three. Well, there's definitely plenty of ghosties here. I've seen quite a lot of fish, and I would say almost half of the fish I've seen are ghosties. How long have we got? Five hours? Six hours? Five hours. Yeah. Five hours. Right. Here we go. This is it. This is like the, uh, the home straight, isn't it, really? Before I started setting up, I uh, baited right and left hand margin with a few handfuls of pellets. And I've just noticed that the, the right hand margin, the reeds are knocking, the bubbles coming up. So there's fish feeding down there. I've just set up a, a simple running rig with a small mini bites pop up. And I'm just gonna attach a, a small PVA mesh bag and just lower it in place down this margin, I'm just watching them fizzing now. Fish are feeding, it's looking good. Just wanna get, get a rod in the water. Actually one's just taking a bit of fluff off the top down there as well. That wasn't a ghosty. Go away, you're meaningless to me today. Did as well, literally came up and mouthed a bit of fluff off the top. <laughs> Please be a ghosty. <laughs> it's fighting like a ghosty. It's fighting very hard. Oh, hello. Is it? it? Could just be a very colourful mirror. It looks a bit orangey to me, that. He's pulling, isn't he? It's a ghosty! It's a ghosty! <laughs> wasn't it? Well, I guess that is a pass. All five. All five. Just like that. Just like that. Well done, mate. Cheers, mate. First bite. Within the first minute of being here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. There we go. I paid my day ticket for a minute's fishing as well. <laughs> oh well. Let's have a look at it, mate. Yeah. And with this little bar of gold, I've now passed all five challenges, therefore completing this mega challenge. 
It's been an emotional roller coaster from start to finish. There's been times when I've thought I was going to absolutely smash it and then just moments later thinking I wouldn't have a prayer. Only this morning I woke up needing to catch two 20 pounders to pass the bait bucket roulette challenge and I couldn't help but think I'm going to need a massive slice of luck to pass this and then it just kicked off could barely keep a rod in the water that bided me time and then we're able to move on to the next venue to try and catch a ghosty we had planned on going somewhere else but Craig recommended we came here it was certainly a great tip off Rod hadn't even been in the water a minute and we've got what we needed. It's, uh, it's been epic and it's certainly gone a long way to exercise many demons and uh, I just hope I don't have to go and do something like this all over again though. I don't want to fail another five challenges and have to do it. <laughs> so there you have it, challenge complete. That felt good saying that. I mean, I've, I've failed these challenges before, so what chance did I have of passing five in four nights? Yes! Oh! Come on, come on, come on. And that is the cack handed challenge passed. It was a double. And you think your luck is not going to go your way. <sighs> that was a better fish, without a doubt. We've got a cracking dark mirror of 18 and a half pounds. Really pleased with this. Yes! Oh, I reckon that's it. Bait bucket roulette! I have no idea what weight I'm on. No idea at all. That's the abracadacurate past. Probably Zach Efron. No, you can't have him. Why? He's mine. <laughs> well, this is absolutely ridiculous. Yes! So I've passed the play your car freight challenge. I'm over the moon with this. Absolutely over the moon. Well, I guess that is a pass. So there we have it, a pass by the skin of my teeth with that small ghosty. But seeing as this is a Christmas special, I felt like I needed to end this episode in an extra special way. So this morning, Christmas morning, I woke up at the crack of dawn, left the missus and kids sleeping in their beds, headed south, waved hello to Santa on the A1 as I made my way over to East Delft North Lake, which is where I originally failed the challenge where I needed to catch a ghostie. And it just so happens I have something extra special for you all right now. So here we have the ghost of Christmas present. And what a present he is too. We've got a cracking 17 pound ghost linear which has really made abandoning the missus and kids on Christmas Day worthwhile. I hope you've enjoyed watching this episode and I hope you all have a fantastic Christmas.